show me why I'm wrong. Okay? You have 30 days in which to file a paper saying why this order I just issued is incorrect. I have never had a single opposition paper filed ever. Interesting. I've had them dance around my orders, you know. So anyway, so the thing is, is you can pick and choose when and where you want to be a sovereign. Okay, well see, citizens are subjects. And citizens have privileges granted by the master. They have no rights. If you're going to be a citizen, if you're a 100% citizen, then you are 100% subject. If you're a part-time citizen, then you can step out of that rule anytime you want. Now, what's the difference between people and citizens, like in my case? The difference is education, knowledge. If you say you are one of the people, you're one of the people. The burden is on them to prove you're not. You see, when you accuse yourself, you don't have to prove it to anybody. It's when somebody else accuses you that they have to come up with the proof. See, any claim you make about yourself, you don't have to prove it. The burden's on the other side. Whoever makes a claim against you, they have to prove whatever their claim is. So I claim I'm a sovereign. What is a sovereign? What, is, what are people? To tell you the truth, I can't tell you what a people is. I know I'm one of them, but I can't tell you what people are or is. By the way, that word is correct, either singular or plural. So what is a people? Well, like I said, I can't tell you, but I'll tell you what I can tell you. I know the relationship between people and government. We the people, whoever, whatever we are, ordain and establish it for you guys, and so you're under us. So if anybody asks me if, oh, you're, says you're a people, what's that? I'll say, I don't know. <laughs> but I know I'm above you, the government. Okay, because that's, they defined our relationship without defining what we were. Yes, sir. How does all this apply to foreign immigrants? Or, well, I mean, immigrants from outside the United States of America? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, I've never really, really researched that. But um, I suspect that an immigrant who comes here, if he's naturalized and subject to the laws, subject to the jurisdiction of the United States, then that person would be a publicly owned slave, right? A citizen. Now, can you break that yoke? Because what they do is they contract you in. When you take the oath of allegiance in order to acquire citizenship, I think they tell you, well, you, do you promise to obey all the laws and this sort of thing? So you actually have a contract. They didn't miss that point. Uh, I suspect you could break the contract, but I don't know how. Now, one person I know, he's researched it, and he says that you have to be of the land. And he claims you cannot move your sovereignty, whatever state you were born in. Now, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but don't, to tell you the truth, I've, de I've never researched the immigrant question. But I'll tell you this. <coughs> If the country that you came from is a republic, then it's the same system we have here, okay? Because the very definition, which is what we're going to get into next, the very definition of a republic involves personal sovereignty, okay? So... This is very interesting because most countries in this world... Are republics. Call, call themselves republics. Yes. But I don't think that China is a republic. Yes, it is. I know for, it is? Mm -hmm. They're all republics. But a republic is at once the best form of government for the most freedom and the worst form of government for enslaving people. What makes it the best? Everybody's educated and knows the difference and choose to be people. What makes it the worst? The people don't know the difference and they allow themselves to be citizens and they get abused, which is how, what you do with citizens. They're just property. Okay? If you don't know the difference, how can you break out of the citizenship shell? So, uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini, you remember him? He chose the Republican form of government for his organization for, over there. Well, because those people who knew the difference, the educated populace, 
They knew the difference, and they chose to be people. That way, the laws that were passed didn't apply to them. And yet, they could send their, their policemen out to beat up on the citizens when, this, when they felt necessary. So, a, uh, a republic is a, uh, a wonderful form of government if everybody's educated in it. It's a terrible form of government if you're ignorant. Okay. All right, so let's see. Um, that's basically, uh, now let's get into the, the point of this. What I'm really, the whole reason for bringing this up is I wanted to explain to you the difference between people and citizens. And the subject, what I wanted to, want to tell you tonight is why it is if you're a citizen you have no rights. And I think you kind of got an idea now from what I've told you. That a citizen doesn't have any rights because why? He's subject. He's given up all that. It, what he gets is privileges. When you talk about uh, civil rights, if you really speak the language correctly, those are called civil privileges. Okay? Natural rights is what people have. Civil rights, also known as civil privileges, is what citizens have. So all these citizens running around demanding their civil rights, what are they saying? What they're saying is, is that certain privileges have been legislated for our benefit, or maybe for our control, and we demand that those civil rights be acknowledged. You won't catch me suing for my civil rights. I'll be suing for my natural rights. Yes. What are civil liberties? Same idea. Same idea, that's your civil rights, civil privileges again. It's civil. It's the civil aspect it says it's government granted. We're not part of the government when we're people, we're above the government. Okay? Sovereignty. Scary thought, isn't it? So, let's go to the Bill of Rights here. Okay? Now, there's a book called It's called the Constitution of the United States of America, Analysis and Interpretation. That's the full name of the book. And I've got a copy of it on this CD, so you can read it. And it's about 2,700 pages. As you can tell, there's a lot on the CD. A quarter of a million bytes, more than that, on there of information. And that's one of the things that I included on is the entire book. But on this here, where I went to uh, people's rights versus citizens' rights, I, I extracted from that book this particular thing because I thought it was particularly interesting to our discussion here. And here it is. This, is, this book, by the way, is published by the Senate. Every senator, every congressman, and the vice president of the United States gets a free copy when they come into office. Why doesn't the president get a copy? The reason is is because he's not part of the Congress. The vice president is the president of the Senate. That's why he gets his free copy. So they all get this. This is, you might loosely call the book of truth. This is, somebody's got to know how this system's put together. Somebody's got to keep this running right. So they publish this book, which many congressmen don't even open. A friend of mine went up to uh, his congressman's office over somewhere near Monrovia, I think it is. He went out, he saw it sitting on the shelf, brand new. <laughs> brand new, never opened, never touched, except to put it on the shelf. But here we are. If you look on Senate document 99-16, which is the official designation for this book, on page 956 through 957, you look at footnote 12. Footnote 12 clarifies the text that's in there. And here's what footnote 12 says. I've kind of laid it out. On the left side, you have amendments that are available to U.S. citizens. We're talking about the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments. Okay? And on the right, we have amendments not available to U.S. citizens. So, you have a privilege, actually, if I speak correct English, you have a pr privilege of free exercise and establishment of religion. Talking about the Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments. Okay? 
And on the right, we have amendments not available to U.S. citizens. So, you have a privilege, actually, if I speak correct English, you have a pr privilege of free exercise and establishment of religion, protection on that. You have freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, and freedom to petition the government. Those are such strong rights for people that when they converted people into citizens, they didn't dare take them away. I mean, there might be another revolution if they did. So they, they've granted those privileges. You have uh, uh, supposedly Fourth Amendment privileges, freedom from search, unreasonable search and seizure, uh, freedom from double jeopardy, self-incrimination, and just compensation for property that they take from you. You know, eminent domain? You know, where the government says, oh, we want your property. And uh, finally, let's see, on the sixth, sixth and Eighth Amendments, these protections have been somewhat diluted. Speedy trial, public trial, jury trial, impartial jury, notice of charges, confrontation of witnesses, uh, compulsory process in order to get your witnesses, and a right to counsel. Those are, they somewhat diluted it, but there it is. I believe if you are considered an enemy combatant, you don't have any right even to see an attorney. You know, that's what all those guys they captured. Yes, sir. Uh, this is on the disc, of course, and uh, where you look at uh, people's rights versus citizens' rights. I can go through the, uh, the chain here. Okay, you're on the home page, and you go to the law notes. You click on law notes. This is, when I say the home page, I'm talking about the very first page that pops up when you put the CD in your computer. So you go to Law Notes. In the Law Notes, you click on the Foundation. And then in the Foundation, you click on People or Citizen. No, I'm sorry, Bill of Rights. You click on Bill of Rights under the Foundation category. And when you click on the Bill of Rights, it brings up that page there. And there is where you have it identified as Senate Document 99-16, pages 956 and 957. Okay. So these are the privileges that citizens have or don't have. Okay. Now let's look at the privileges that citizens do not have. And by the way, these are all have a history of court determination. This book cites the cases for that, that support the, the uh, interpretation that's being made. So let's look at these rights that you don't have. In other words, privileges that are not granted to citizens. You do not have a right to keep and bear arms. That should touch uh, some hot points here for some people. Okay. If you're a people, you have a right. In fact, you have all rights. What are your rights? Whatever you say they are as long as you don't hurt another one of the people, one of the sovereigns. But as a citizen, you don't have a right. Why don't you? Because you're subject. If you're subject, you've got to obey the rules that you're given. Under the common law, we have one rule. Don't hurt anybody. The golden rule. Treat others as you'd have them treat you. You've all heard that golden rule, right? That's the found Christianity. The Christian Bible is the foundation of the American system of law. Okay? And that goes back further. The Christian system of law is based on the Judaic Christ system of law. So, re regardless of your belief, our legal system was extracted from those systems. So, but you see, as a citizen, it's all about the love. All you have is privileges. So we're going to have to okay. stop, cut off Bill here. And um, this is uh, our show's.